Hello everyone, Ross at Teacher Toolkit. Um, I've got five ideas for you here. This is from uh, a lovely little book called The Decision Book, which I've had <clears throat> um, for about a year. Um, there's 50 ideas inside, uh, and they're really good ideas for uh, thinking strategically. So really good for middle leaders, uh, want to be kind of school leaders, uh, or people who might work with schools. Um, so I'm going to just share five of them. So you've got the graphics on the screen. So this one is great for coaching, for providing feedback, whether that's to a child um, in a parent's evening or a child in a lesson, or if you're working with other teachers and you're pushed for time, it particularly looks at how can we move away from giving an emotional piece of feedback to rather than just advice or a compliment, which might just be not... Um, superficially pleasing but how can i provide a suggestion that might elicit more thinking from you as the individual so student or teacher context is key here um but where i draw out your own solutions rather than me give you advice or something that feeds your ego so the feedback box is an idea in the book it's also on my blog if you want to read out more details it's an idea that i'd recommend checking and um, if you've been to my teacher training sessions so mark plan teach i talk about the flow model so this comes from um, Mihal Csikszentmihalyi, he's a Hungarian psychologist and what this looks like in the classroom are when Bryce or Ross or Sarah or Ahmed or whoever, it, uh, if I pitch the work too high, they're over challenged and they burn out. So they would essentially opt out, sir, Mr. McGill, I'm not going to do this. If the work's under pitched, not at their level. I'm bored and it's under a challenge, it's under challenge. So I'm not meeting the challenge of their abilities. And what I need to do is, uh, as Cheek Zen Mahai describes, is move the student from apathy to flow. In the lesson, this might look like, so you might be doing an activity and a student at the end of lessons will say, oh, Mr. McGill, that lesson went really quickly. That's a good hallmark that they were immersed in their learning. And that often comes from this, an intense focus on activity, so it's that line in the middle, where I provide the students with a choice, but they it's both linked to a, a clear objective, and I give them immediate feedback. Um, and when this happens, so Cheek Zemma High calls this immersion, and I get the right pitch of work, um, I can move a student from not enjoying the subject, not engaging, to getting immersed and getting lost in the learning. Um, the next idea is the cognitive dissonance model. So this kind of goes back to the feedback. If you're providing someone with feedback uh, and they might not like what you say, whether it's a conversation with a colleague or an observation or someone visiting your school, um, how do you know if someone's experiencing cognitive dissonance? Now, at the top, we've got, if I said to you, your teaching's under par, and if, if that was their attitude, and someone said to you, well, I'm not paid to teach, you are, that's a good cue uh, or signal that that person is experiencing cognitive dissonance. They don't want to engage in your dialogue. Um, they think your teaching's weak um, and they are paying you to be the teacher and they're coming to give you that advice. So often uh, leadership responsibilities, people that don't teach as much in the classroom, that's an indication that you're, the person you're working with is experiencing cognitive dissonance, thinking about disagreements. That's essentially what it means. However, if you are working with someone where they're more consistent with working out the differences between the things that you say and your disagreements, someone might say, your teaching's under par, Ross, but I understand why, X, Y, Z. So then they would um, model this through their behaviours. When I taught, it was X, Y, Z, but let's work out some solutions. So if that happens, then you're probably working with someone who's not experiencing cognitive dissonance, they're not finding it difficult to disagree with you, but they're offering some suggestions. And it's a nice way to look at that. In terms of you want someone to make a decision for you, um, on this, here's another idea. This model shows the extent of consequences for your decisions. Now, you might often have someone who doesn't want to make a decision. I think it's important here that the person says, I'm not going to make a decision, but I will get back to you with a decision. And that essentially, the extent of that choice, so we've got a positive and a negative here, over a period of time, I need to find out and make that decision for that knowledge. 
But if I don't make that decision and I just leave it to linger, there's a consequence. If I don't make a decision, that's just as bad as, um, sorry, let me articulate that again. If I am not ready to make a decision, it's helpful to say, let me get back to you with a decision by X period of time. And that's very good for the other person to know that the, the, the kind of conversation you're having or the problem will be um, kind of actioned. Now, there's more on my blog to explain that. That, one. that one's quite um, an interesting model. And um, the last one. Now, this is uh, probably a good idea to use. Um, in any context, but the difficulty is with schools that are in high accountability models to evaluate other team members. Um, I think this is something that needs to be done openly. But the challenge is for us all with someone else saying, oh, Ross, you're person number two. We've rated you down here. Um, so what we're looking at here is what's the critical threshold, the critical limit where you want everyone to be performing. You may do this yourself as a manager. The challenge is then to share this with the people that you work with or ask them to do that of yourself. Now, these are largely business strategic leadership models. They may not all apply in a school setting. So don't take them as these are the things that you must do. But there are some things that you might want to consider that you can use um, in your own place of work. So get in touch at Teacher Toolkit or email me at support at teachertoolkit.co.uk. Um, something for the summer to read the decision book. Um, it's worth checking out. So thanks for watching.